What's going on everyone? I'm uh, Tom Davis from Escape Camper Van Conversions and I'm about to do my first van talk video. I've been converting vans for two and a half years now and yeah, I haven't got around to doing a tour of any of the vans I've converted just yet. So it's my first one, so I hope you like it. This particular van's being converted for family of three. The way that they are gonna use the van is basically just at week weekends, um, campsites and that, you know what I mean? So we haven't actually needed to put any off-grid solar panels or anything like that in this van. Uh, so yeah, we just basically designed and planned it out to suit uh, my customer's style of travel. but uh, you know it's decent stuff comes in at around 60 quid square metre next thing is the seats so these two seats are from I think I'm going to say these uh, Vito and they fold so both seats fold down like that they actually fold up and they can be taken out as well if you want to just a little bit more space in the van. Um, we swapped the double passenger seat for a single captain seat, and of course, add the more reupholstered uh, in the brown brown leather. Um, <clears throat> the so this this area doubles up as the dining area, and the table is stored away at the back here. Slide that out. <coughs> the leg comes out, drops in there, and then table top on, on there. Yeah, so when we were thinking about what table to use in the camper van, um, we dis well, I suggested that we went for this style because the family who own the van. We've got a, a young son and with fitting car seats in and out of there, it just makes more sense to me to, to have something that you can you know, take out the way, store down the side there. Uh, it just gives you a bit more space to, to do what you need to do. Um, so windows that we fitted into the van are the Dometic sight windows. Um, Decent window and I always recommend fitting these over the standard vehicle glass if the budget allows it. Just because they're a lot better for insulating purposes. Uh, they're nice and secure, they've got a little lock on the, on the handle there. Slide to open. And they've also got a built-in blackout blind and flight screen. So yeah, good window and I'd definitely recommend using them. Uh, so with that window and the insulation that we've got in the walls, ceiling and floor, um, we've got like a medium density rock hole in the walls and ceiling and 25 mil PIR board in the floor. So yeah, it's pretty well insulated and uh, keep it nice and warm in the, in the winter months and nice and cool in the summer, hot summer days. Um, on top of that, <coughs> underneath the passenger seat here, We've got, little, you can see that there, we've got a diesel, diesel heater. Um, the, cust the customer decided to go for a cheaper version than the 
um, the more well-known brands of like uh, Airbus Spatcher and Webasto, but pretty much does the same job. Uh, <coughs> just blows out hot air from there, little control panel, and like this particular one, it even comes with like a stop-start button on your keys, so you know you can operate it from in the bed or outside the vehicle. Just switch it on, it gets nice and warm in there for uh, before you come in. Um, so moving down, come on. Got the kitchen area. So <clears throat> first off, copper tap. Just uh, something I made in the workshop. Um, there's two stop cocks, a little flange on the bottom, and then the rest copper pipe. Uh, I then sprayed it with like a, a clear lacquer just to stop any any water splashes getting on these um, these flanges at the bottom are cast iron so they would rust if we didn't spray it with with a lacquer and it just keeps it nice and shiny as well it stops it going like green and getting all finger marks on it <coughs> next is the sink so we've got this little drop in piece here and what I've done with that drop in piece to get nice and flush and also stop it moving around when you're driving I've routed a little rebate onto that so you see that part of it sits inside the sink and that little lip there just sits on on the lip of the of the sink there so nice and sturdy keeps the gap nice and even all the way around and of course just a little finger in there hey <laughs> finger all there <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh fuck it <clears throat> So the drawers in here, uh, all got a soft close drawer on it. Uh, in this top drawer, made a little drop in, put the drawer so it'd be like your bigger knives and utensils now at the bottom, and just your standard knives, forks, and spoons in the top there. <clears throat> this one's obviously a blank because the, the sink's behind that. We've got two deep pan drawers. Again, both on a soft close. Uh, and like a little rather cupboard. Again, that's on a soft close as well. Uh, the fridge is made by Vertifrigo, I think that's what I pronounce it, but yeah, this one's uh, pretty big, it's a 90 litre fridge, it's got a freezer box up there as well, so for your ice, and yeah, if you've got a little switch there that you can isolate the, the fridge, if, it, if you need to switch it off to save power or whatever. <clears throat> um, the hob just went for the standard two gas burner. Um, yeah, like I said, it's pretty standard. Nothing, not too special about that. Uh, we've got a couple of two forty volt sockets there, and a little switch operates the the fan. So these sockets here, they don't run off uh, an inverter. Because this family pretty much you're only going to be using this van at campsites. Uh, it's just that's just basically uh, use them when you're hooked up to the mains. So yeah, no need for any inverter or anything in this van. Uh, now on this side, who's got storage right the way down? So, a couple of little stays to keep the lids open, uh, and this one opens that way. Originally it was intended to open the same way as these but <clears throat> because of this little nib here it wouldn't wouldn't allow it to open that way so decided to switch that one round and open it that side. Um, this unit is something that it's a mixture of um, bolt items and Handmade. So these these trays you might recognise 
from um, just from IKEA. So <clears throat> what I've done there is routed the little groove into the side of into the side of the, the unit, but then put a little um, like a little drop in so they don't fly out when it's when you're driving. So it's sort of like to to get those out, it's like a lift and pull action. And as you can see there, it just drops in behind this little lip just to, just to keep them in place while you're driving. <clears throat> uh, this cupboard down here is going to house a little cassette toilet. So put a little bungee cord in there as well to, just to keep that secure. And we've also got a little drawer up here that is probably going to have, you know, bog roll. Um, cleaner products and shit like that in it. Um, this this next unit we got three little um, three little bins that are stored in here. You come out and it lets you have access into the, the storage down that side as well. Um, so down here we've got the gas cupboard. Uh, so that's where the gas bottle will go. Yeah. So if you need to access to that, pull all the bins out and reach down into the next little bit of storage is this drawer. So I've been asked asked a few times um, lately about how do I keep drawers and cupboards closed well the answer is it, it just depends where about the, the drawer or the cupboard is so for something like this those soft close mechanisms are quite strong so they're fine I don't need any other type of lock on there but this drawer at the bottom because you've been sort of slamming on from time to time you know and once it's got stuff in it's heavy I, have a tendency to, to fly out so with this one I just added a little uh, lock and latch so basically what happens is you when that's pushed in and it's flush this little latch there uh, it connects with a, a, a little catch on, on the underside so it keeps it shut there's no way of that flying open uh, and then obviously to open it press that the little knob shoots out the this part drops down and it opens again. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> next thing is under the bed. So, down here we've got, just hold that out of the way. Got another little storage box in there that was just sort of dead space under the bed. So, you know, that's to make the most out of every inch in these things. So, just turned it into a little, little box. So, yeah, I don't know what they'll put in there, but I'm sure they'll find something. Um, and I don't know whether you can see the further down there, we've got the Whale Expanse Water Heater. Um, that runs off LPG. Um, it's actually a dual fuel, so it's LPG and electric. So, the reason why we went for that water heater is because the customers are uh, mountain bikers. Now, when I said before about they'll only be using this on uh, campsites, that water heater allows them to use it uh, off grid, you know, so when, when they're out on the bikes and you fancy getting a quick shower out on the road, then that will allow them to. There's a shower that's mounted at the back, and I'll show you that in a bit. But yeah, they can get hot water from the LPG and get a quick wash, or even uh, use it as a bike wash as well. So that was the, the reasons behind choosing that water heater. Um, yeah, the water system in the van consists of a, I think it's a 72 litre underslung water tank. It's then got a shore flow pressurised pump which pulls the water from the water tank and pumps it then to 
either the tap or the shower at the back. Um, <clears throat> okay, next thing in here is this is the little storage box. So again, a different type of locking mechanism. Uh, it's just a push to open. So it's got plenty of storage in there. Probably good for extra bedding, things like that. And got the kids' bunk bed up here. So it's like a little cabin, little den. <clears throat> so this uh, the customers who, who own this van uh, I say it's, it's for a family of three but what we spoke about in the in the in the, sorry in the early stages of the, of the build and the design part of it was if they were to have another kid then we'd want to adapt this van rather than having to, you know, for, for them to have to scrap it and buy it, you know, sell it and buy a new van to, to suit four of them. We've created this, um, made it easy to add an extra bed. So this cupboard is actually there and designed to, if, if they eventually do have another child and you want to add another bed. So what we'll do is mount something from here into this wall and then that would become uh, the, the extra bed then for the, uh, for the four, so, sorry, the second child. So yeah, pretty easy modification job. It just makes a lot of sense instead of having to, to sell a van and start again from scratch. So the name given to this van is Mukvan. It was actually the, the three-year-old son who, who came up with the name. Um, and my customer was originally asking um, for like a, a neon neon white and we looked into them. Uh, we looked into them at the quoting stage and they were coming out very expensive. So I offered them a different option. Uh, being a sheet metal worker and steel fabricator by trade, I offered to, to make them this little light box. So we got the obviously the letter and laser profiled into it. Um, we fitted like a, a pink LED strip light all the way around. So that was uh, what we went for, rather than paying someone else to do the the neon neon light. Um, <clears throat> the other lighting that we've got in the van, obviously, as you can see, there's just four spotlights that run the length of the of the van, and we've also added this like mood lighting with the um, coven, the backlit coven. Um, yeah, so once you know got the young lad in bed uh, and the, the adults are staying up having a few drinks um, it's good to have a few different options with the lighting so you know we could turn the main lights off just have the, the co backlit coven on or you know just the spots and there's even reading lights as well, so see inside here, little reading light, and also another reading light for the for the double bed. That main panel at the top basically operates all of the lights and the fan and all like the the twelve volt stuff. Um, down here we've got. This thing is a water level indicator, so the underslung tank, obviously a bit harder to check the level. Uh, this, all you do is press that button and that just gives you a readout of how much water is in there. This one here is just a few spare for the whale water heater. It's just recommended in the instruction manual that you fit one of them between the mains 
power and the water heater so that's just a bit of added safety and then this is the controls for the water heater itself you've got the switch on the left hand side operator in gas mode and switch on the right hand side operates the electric heating elements that are inside so there's there's actually two so switch it up it turns on one heating element and knock it down it'll turn on both and you can actually have gas and electric on both at the same time so down here we just made use of a little bit of space there so just a nice place to put you know a book a glass of water when you go to bed uh, phones or whatever the way that the the bed is intended to be slept in is heads down this end with feet underneath that bed so that's pretty much it for the inside of the van uh, if we jump outside i'll show you what we've got fitted at the back doors and also the awning that we've got intended to be fitted onto a Mercedes Sprinter but because we already had the roof rack up there uh, we couldn't get into the um, into the regular fix amount for the awning that's supposed to go on the Sprinter we decided to go for the 45S it's a 4 metre awning and what I've done I've mounted it to the side of the roof rack and because of the, there was a gap between the awning and the side of the van there. What I've done, I've folded up some aluminium trims and put them, uh, mounted them behind just to stop any rain getting from, you know, it's through that gap and into into this space where they'd be be sat if it is raining. And then, so yeah, that's what we've done with this in the end. Um, pretty simple to set it up. It comes with a um, slight little crank. So there's actually a couple of mounts that come with this. I haven't mounted it into the, um, into the living area yet. So I'll let the customer decide where he wants them mounting when he comes to collect the van. But this is it, you take the crank out. to do then would be to peg the uh, peg the legs into into the ground. But yeah, great piece of a uh, great piece of kit. I think these come in at around eight hundred quid for a for a four metre awning. Uh, but like I said, well well worth the money. Um, 
you wouldn't even notice it was up there once it's packed away. <clears throat> so we come round to the back of the van. So the storage area, that big storage cover with the bins in. Uh, obviously gives you access to the gas cupboard. That's the gas cupboard down there. Um, so anything you put in there, you can actually get at it through the, uh, through the living space as well. Um, but yeah, I think that storage space is good for, for the bigger items that you take with you on your camping trips, you know, the outdoor seating and tables and stuff like that. Um, then we've got a big drawer. coming on there for all sorts of stuff. And in here we've got the electrical stuff, we've just got split charge relay, fuse box, the 12 volt uh, isolation switch, uh, the mains electricity and a battery charger as well. This is a smart battery charger, so basically once the get to a campsite and they plug into the mains electricity all you got to do here is knock that switch on and that battery charge will just keep the battery topped up and allow them to use all of the 12 volt stuff in there for however long they need to then um yeah um, also got this little thing here which is for the shower obviously you can see the shower's mounted there but it's not intended to be used here just because uh, it's better if you know the, the panels don't get wet uh, you don't want any water getting in by the electric so the, the idea behind this is you take the shower head off pass it over the door come around this side and find the spot to where you want to mount the shower head clip that on and away you go get a shower outside then. Pretty simple but Last little bit of storage we've got up there. You say it's just a, a bit of dead space, but in any dead space you can always find some, make use of it somehow. So yeah, we just put a little bit of extra storage space up there. <clears throat> Obviously, here we've got the Rhino ladder and roof rack this was actually already fitted before it came to me but you know dead handy to have if uh, you know if you can take a bigger kit with you when you're when you're traveling store it up on top and uh, away you go this is the mains hook up when you pull up at a campsite look straight into there and this is the fill port, basically just exactly the same type of thing as uh, where you'd fill up your diesel. Uh, the key, unscrew it and put your hose straight in there and fill up the water tank, which is of course strapped underneath the vehicle. Yeah, so that's pretty much it with this van. Um, as I said, me, uh, this is my first van tour that I've ever done out of all the conversions that I've done so far but if you do want to see any more of my work then go over to my instagram at escape.conversions and you see pictures and videos of the other conversions on there um, yeah thanks for watching uh, you know what to do uh, give us a like subscribe to the channel uh, there'll be more more tours and other how-to videos going on for my channel soon so subscribe like, do all that, and uh, I'll see you next time.